Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 27, machining the brake beams. These 5 inch gauge locomotive brake parts are available from Blackgate's Engineering. All you have to do is cut them out and machine the ends. And I'm going to machine the ends of these, but I'm going to do it like an absolute beginner. Because the method required to machine these parts successfully is not 100% obvious. So while I'm at it, I thought I would show how not to remove a 3 jaw chuck from the lathe. Rule 1, do not remove the chuck using one hand. Lathe chucks are too heavy for one hand, even hands the size of mine. And it's a good idea to put something underneath the chuck so if it falls onto the bed it doesn't damage it. In place of the 3 jaw chuck, I'm fitting my 4 jaw chuck. And what I'm about to do is clamp one of the brake beams in the 4 jaw chuck to machine the end of it. And here, on purpose, I'm doing something else wrong. I'm tightening the chuck onto the spindle using the chuck key. This is not too smart because you can damage the chuck this way. It's a much better idea to use a long piece of bar in between the chuck jaws. And do not over tighten the chuck on the lathe spindle. Now it's time to fit the first of the brake beams into the four jaw chuck. I'm putting it roughly in position in the middle. And now what I'm doing is tightening the jaws whilst watching the position of the jaws relative to the circular lines on the front face of the chuck. These guidelines show the position of the jaws at any time and are very useful for the initial setting of the position of the parts held in the chuck. But it's only a starting point. Obtaining the correct position for the work that you're going to turn needs a bit more patience and takes a bit more time. You have to make minute adjustments to the jaws to make sure that the part is exactly in the right place. Setting up components in a four jaw chuck is an exercise in patience, and sometimes it can take quite a while. If you run out of patience, it's a good idea to stop what you're doing and go and work on something else. This video is heavily edited. It took quite a long time to get this in the right position. As the video progresses, when you see the red cross, you know something's wrong and something's going to happen. Because the brake beam tapers at each end, I'm holding it by the parallel part. And as you can see, this is not good at all. It sticks out far too much and bends very easily. Very carefully, using a soft hammer and very light blows, I straighten it. I've replaced it in the chuck, but a bit further in this time. And in this clip, I'm using a center drill to make sure it's exactly in the center. I'm also using the brake hanger itself to gauge the diameter that I need to turn the end of these brake beams to. Let's try take two. Oh dear, it's bent again. Please don't write in to tell me how to do it. I'm doing this on purpose. Once again, using the soft hammer, I straighten the part. But this is obviously going to be no good at all. And besides, the part isn't in the correct place anyway. Take a close look at this component. Can you see the two square parts that stick out on the tapered bit? These are not part of the brake beam. The laser cut blank has been shaped like this so you can put it in the four jaw chuck, clamping it by the parallel part and by the protrusions at the front. At this stage, I should show surprise and say, well, I didn't know that, but really it is obvious because brake beams are tapered towards the end and do not have square protrusions on them. A lot of castings are made like this with extra parts left on the casting just to make machining easier. Using a ruler, I'm marking the position at 3 16 of an inch, and I've done this on every one of the brake beams. I suppose a scribed line would be more engineering-like and more accurate, but for this job, the felt-tip pen works fine. I've speeded up the job now because otherwise this video would be one of the longest I've ever made. And as you can see, now the job is progressing without event. Here, I'm checking the size using one of the brake hangers as a gauge. When I finally turn the part to the right size, I clean it up using some emery cloth. In my opinion, the hole in the bottom of the brake hanger is a bit too big. If I made the end of the brake beam fully round, it would be too small to fit into this oversized hole. It's not a massive problem though, don't forget these are dummy brakes, so the functionality is unimportant. And once I've turned the end of all of the brake beams, I'm going to just touch them on the one inch belt sander to create the illusion that they are perfectly round. Don't forget these brake beams will be fully painted and I will paint the ends as well, which will help to fill the gap in the oversized holes in the brake hangers. This cutting tool is very blunt and as it's bent the bar a couple of times, it's probably slightly chipped and it's not getting the best finish, but this is really not important. I don't need a bearing finish at all because once they're fitted to the locomotive, they're never going to move. 
I'm making small adjustments to the position of the four jaw chucks jaws to make sure that I turn the part exactly in the centre of the bar. And off we go again. I know some viewers like to watch machining operations in real time, but from a tutorial point of view, boredom is always a problem. I watched a tutorial about how to operate a Yamaha TF5 audio mixer, which is a very complex piece of electronics. I watched the Yamaha tutorials, but I didn't think they were quite in-depth enough, and I still had a few grey areas in my thinking, so then I found a tutorial by a chap a bit too thorough, and quite frankly, it was a bit boring. And that's why I often speed up the video to shorten the time it takes to watch a simple turning operation. I mean, how many times do you need to see this tool going back and forth? It's bad enough at this speed. It occurs to me that I may get a message or two from some experts saying, why don't you centre drill the end and turn it between centres? And the answer to that is because I don't want a centre hole in the ends of all the brake beams. After a final clean up with the emery cloth, followed by a quick touch on the one inch belt sander, here are the finished brake beams. And I'm quite pleased with them. When they're painted, they'll look fine. And the manufacturing process is far simpler than doing it this way. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.